Grace, mercy, and peace, they are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The sermon this morning is based on selected verses from today's gospel, verses 25 through 32. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. I want you to think about the last time you moved. Or maybe something similar, the last time you changed schools. Either starting school or going from elementary to middle school or middle school to high school or high school to college or even changing schools somewhere in between. Or the last time you changed jobs, either because you took a new job opportunity or because you were transferred. Or you could think about the day that you retired. All of these have something in common. They all mark the close of one chapter and the beginning of another. And at the close of each chapter, there's always time to reflect on what's happened in the previous chapter. Questions that you ask and perhaps want to answer. How did I do? How did things go? Did I make more mistakes than not? Did I get everything done that I wanted to get done while I was in this part of my life? Standing on this cusp is also an opportunity to look forward into the future, to ask similar questions. What will it be like? What will I get done? Who will I meet? Who will become my friends? Will I be successful? Will I be happy? The truth is, today we stand on a similar threshold as we leave 2023 and enter 2024. And perhaps you look back at your year of 2023 and you ask a lot of the same questions. Did I get everything done this year that I wanted to get done? Did my mistakes outweigh my successes? Did I enjoy happiness in the past year? Or was it a hard year? And you look forward into 2024 and ask some of the same questions there as well. What will happen to me this upcoming year? Perhaps for some of you that does mean changing schools. You graduate to the next level. Or you begin a new job. Or move to a new place. And you wonder, as you close one chapter and move into the next, will I have peace? Simeon stood on a similar threshold on that day 2,000 years ago, 40 days after Jesus was born. We're told that Simeon was a devout and righteous man. The Bible has good things to say about his relationship with God, devout, and with other people. Righteous. 
He believed God's promises to the nation of Israel. He was looking for the consolation of Israel. Perhaps on his mind were those verses we read just a few weeks ago from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah 40 with its promises of the Messiah, that he will lead his flock like a shepherd. The lambs he will gently hold and he will lead them to gentle streams. Simeon had that big promise of God on his mind. But the Holy Spirit had also made a smaller promise, just just for Simeon. He had promised Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And so Simeon often went to the temple courts, but on this day, the Holy Spirit moved him to go to the temple courts because today was going to be a special day. Finally, the Lord's promise to him would be fulfilled. And on that day, he was there in the temple courts and who came in but Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And perhaps this is a little shocking to you, especially to you moms, but Simeon goes over to them and just takes the baby from Mary and Joseph, holds him in his arms And begins praising God with that song that you are so familiar with. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. That day marked a closing of a chapter in Simeon's life. Up until this point, from the time that God had made him the promise, he knew he wasn't going to die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. But now, the promise was fulfilled. And now he could die. And yet, he was at peace with this. Because he had seen the Lord's salvation. As you have promised, he says, my eyes have seen your salvation prepared in the sight of all nations. And it's not just some great sign in the sky that Simeon has seen or some great act of deliverance. No, what he has seen is a little baby that he is holding in his very arm. Because the promise was a person. But how could Simeon say then, well, he has this baby in his arms, that he has seen God's salvation. The baby really hasn't done anything yet. Yes, up to this point in his life, 40 days in, he's already been keeping God's law with the help of his parents. He's come eight days after his birth to be circumcised, to receive his name, Jesus. That's tomorrow's festival. And on this day, 40 days after, he is presented to the Lord as the firstborn and a sacrifice is made on his behalf. We won't get into all the details why, but if you want to know, you can email me later and I'll tell you why Jesus needed to come 40 days after his birth as well. But he's still just a little baby. And yet Simeon sees in this little baby already the full fulfillment of God's promise Because if God has kept just a part of the promise, he will keep the whole promise. Even though Simeon, who likely is very old by this point, will die before Jesus dies, long before, already Simeon could know that salvation had been one. When God makes a promise, it is already kept. And so, Simeon could say, Lord, now dismiss your servant in peace. Because holding that baby in his arms, holding the Savior of the world in his arms, he could look back on his whole life and be at peace. 
even though we're told that Simeon was righteous and devout, he was still a sinner. He himself recognizes this because he recognizes his need for salvation. But he could look back on all the years of his life, all the mistakes he made, all the promises he didn't keep, all his failures, all his missteps, all his sins, and know that they would be wiped away by the Messiah he was holding in his arms. He could look back at his entire life, at all the disappointments and the tragedies, and know that a Savior had come to rescue him from this world and promise him a better life. And so this was peace for the future as well. Because he knew none of those sins that he had committed beforehand would be held against him. All the sins that he would commit after this day would be pardoned as well. And he had a home in heaven waiting for him. You've sung these words before. Have you recognized what Simeon was singing? He's not just saying, okay, let me leave the temple today. Let me depart in peace from here. But let me depart in peace from this life. And even so, even if Simeon continued to live on much longer after this day, it doesn't tell us, of course, when he finally died. Some legends say he died on the spot. That would have been shocking. But however much longer he lived between this moment and the end of his life, he could have peace because he knew where he would be at the end. He knew that everything that happened between this moment and the end would have to get him to that end. And because this was a fulfillment of God's promise, his big promise to save the world, to save Simeon from sin, he could also know that God would also keep the rest of his promises to provide for him, protect him, take care of him, guide him, lead him. And so he could depart from this life in peace. He could depart from the temple that day in peace because he had seen the Lord's salvation. So what about us? Unless you are 2,000 years old, you were not in the temple that day. You couldn't come up like Anna did also and see the baby Jesus, perhaps hold him in your arms. You did not get to see the face of your Savior as a little baby. But you also have seen the Lord's salvation. You have seen the Lord's Messiah before you have died. The Lord has come to you through his word and given you those same promises of salvation just as he has promised to all people. As he has prepared it before all the nations to lighten your heart. You have seen him here on the altar as he comes to you in his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And he has made this promise to you that you are at peace with God. No longer does anything stand between you and God because Jesus has taken away your sin. So although you have not held the baby Jesus in your arms, you have beheld him in the ways that he has made himself known to you. And you may depart in peace. Aren't you glad they don't do a year in review of your life at the end of each year? 
What would your year in your review say for 2023? My wife, Caitlin, she sent me a reel the other day of a husband and wife, you know, they do those Instagram reel sketches kind of thing. And the wife, I hope this was all played for laughs, but she made a PowerPoint of their year in review of their relationship. And one of the slides was that they had had arguments during the year. Eight arguments, she said. I thought that number sounded quite low. And she said that one of the people in the relationship had won one of the arguments, and the other person had won seven of the arguments. I bet you can guess which one won the seven arguments. Of course, then she changed it later, and the pie chart that she was using changed to the person who had won seven arguments actually won all eight arguments. But can you imagine if something like that were real? If every year you came and you sat right here in the front row and someone put all your life from 2023 on the screen for all the world to see, not just the good times and the happiness and the success, but the failures and the mistakes and the lost arguments and the disappointments and the tragedies. If God would do that. But what does God tell us? He tells us in the Psalms, as far as the east is from the west, so far I have removed your sin from you. He says about us, I will remember their sins no more. And so even though you might look at back at your year, 2023, and think about all the things you didn't get done, think about all the mistakes that you made, all the problems you had, know that you have seen the Lord's salvation who has come to wipe your slate clean, not just going into the new year, but going into each new day of your life. And so you can be at peace because God will not hold your year against you. You can also have peace, having seen the Lord's salvation, going into the new year. Have you thought about what's coming up in 2024? Just run through the months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And what is in store? Much that you can see on the horizon, but perhaps much also that is unknown. If you think back about 2023, there was much that you were not expecting to happen this year, and it did, what can happen in 2024? There's much that you see coming forward in the year to come and you're dreading its arrival. And yet just like Simeon, you can have peace because you have seen the Lord's salvation. Because you already know the end. You know when that day comes, when it's time for the Lord to dismiss you in peace, you will be in heaven with him. And everything that happens in the year 2024 and after will only serve to get you there. And at the same time, because God has kept his big promise to you to send a savior for you, to give you peace, because he has kept a little promise to you, to show you his Messiah before you die, you know that he also will keep his other promises to you in the year 2024, that he will still be with you wherever you might be going, that he will still guide you and lead you, that he will still protect and comfort you, provide for all your needs. Because he has shown you his Messiah. A light to, for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of his people, 
Israel. And he will continue to show you him again and again throughout the coming year, coming to you in his word, coming to you on his altar with one goal in mind. To give you peace. Are you ready to be dismissed? Are you ready to depart from this year into the next? The real question as we study Simeon's words today is Are you ready to die? In a few moments, we'll receive the Lord's Supper together. Again, a promise of forgiveness to us. And even though we don't usually sing it at the end of our, after the communion service, we will today at the end of our service, sing these very same words. And I want you to reflect on that as you sing them. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. You're not just saying, let me get out the doors today. Let me get home. You're telling God, I'm ready, Lord. Take me home. Amen.